Hi guys, how you doing today? Uh, today on this video, uh, I have a 4L80 here that I'm doing. It's a, it's a performance uh, swap uh, 4L80 that's going to go behind a uh, 5.3 and it's going to be a turbo truck. I'm not a turbo truck, a uh, nitrous truck. Uh, and for high performance applications, I mean, you do your normal, you know, your bushings, your... Actually, I, on this one, I installed uh, Raybestos uh, Stage 1 uh, Red Frictions on this unit. Uh, but the purpose of this video is not about the performance build. Uh, well, kind of, sort of, yeah, you know, because uh, we have to, as you see here, you, I got my dial indicator and I got some pliers here. And I got this screwdriver lining my pump. And I only have two bolts torqued in my, uh, on my uh, front pump. But the planetary gear assembly is, is not assembled completely. Uh, as you can see, I got both of my planets out here. And uh, I was doing my... Uh, I did the rear, uh, the rear clearance on it. And uh, I got it pretty close, pretty tight. And I was doing my front clearance, and on my front clearance, I had a, I have a lot of uh, clearance in the front. And also, uh, in between, in between the uh, both planets, uh, it takes a plastic washer like this, and I replace with, I replace it with one of this. But it's all, always overlooked. Uh, not always, but I mean, it's very easily overlooked the uh, the clearance that you have from the front planet to the rear planet uh, uh in between the the center support the front planet and the rear planet the end play that the front planet goes uh up up and down or forward and back you know uh depends on i mean if the transmission is laying uh in its working position and unfortunately there's no uh specifications you have to do it by feel and for that, I use some shims, and I get them from Sonex, and uh, I'll get them out of the bag here. But what we, what we want is like, kind of eyeball it, like 10 thousandths of an inch to less than 15 thousandths of an inch uh, play between the center support and, and the rear planet. You know, we're talking about the front planet. And since they're not selectable, there are some shims for the output that you get from uh, from Sonics. Let me get this out of the bag right quick. So this video, this video is going to be for just setting up the the uh, the end play, the front end play, the rear end play, and then the uh, end play or the clearance in between the planets. And uh, so here they are. And the part number is uh, Sonics. What? 34006-05 As a matter of fact, I have the washer that go there that I installed in between the planets and it's a four tap washer but it's a two it's a two tap it's a four tap brass washer that you replace the plastic one which is a two tap and what you do you just straighten up the other two tabs, right? And then you use I already cut this off and as you see this, this right here these are the shims and uh, they are you're gonna see that there's a lot of play there's a lot of play on them and like on a regular daily driver just a regular truck or whatever you with a 4L80 I mean you can leave it as you can leave it as it is but if you're gonna do some performance uh, stuff with it you're gonna be racing with it I mean with all that torque you don't want those planets swapping, you know, flopping around, you know, back and forth in there, uh, which is, it will not damage them. I mean, but if you have a lot of horsepower, you might, you might do some, something might happen to it. So all three Sprags, you know, the uh, Transgo HD2 shift kit, and also for the front section, Transgo has this, uh, it's a 4, 4L80E, HTRK, which are the high temp uh, ring kit, uh, because when on working trucks or work, working vehicles, I mean they do have some issues. But I, I I got this not for the rings, you know, because I I install all bushings on these things, and basically the issue is 
when you rerun your bushings and uh, even if you install new ceiling rings since they are solid ceiling rings and they do shrink with heat with worn out bushings uh the, the shafts they don't they don't center in in their bore and they they open up and they start cross leaking so uh that's what these are uh they have little uh, ring expanders in it but I, I got it because of the front clearance uh so you have two spacers here uh, they go in the uh, in the forward clutch hub and you install them there to uh to adjust your flunk front clearance and you don't want to put a lot of thicker washers on the pump to the uh, overrun drum because you're gonna lift it up away from the ceiling rings and you're gonna cause some issues there so it's better just to bring the whole front section up towards the pump which that's what this is for and also uh, not only that but I have some Sonex, so this one here, so this is for the forward clutch, forward clutch hub, and these are oversized, this, these are 78 thousandths of an inch, they are thicker than, than, than factory, and then we have direct, I have uh, direct, uh, I think these are 78 as well, and then they have the thick ones, which are 94 thousandths uh they go on the forward clutch hub and this is to uh to raise your clearance uh i think it's a 5 to 14 or 24 something like that i'll get the book and i'll show you uh what's the, what the what the clearance is for the front so you want to get your front clearance uh good you want to get your rear clearance good and you want to get your uh clearance in between the planets nice and tight as well you want to you want to hold your center support and then pick up the the front planet up and down a little bit and you want to you want a little bit of play i mean because you don't want that to be real, real real tight so uh i'm gonna go ahead and lean this uh, transmission to the side and we're gonna check our front section and then we're gonna look inside the barrel of the case uh, so you guys can see uh the rear already have it set up i was working on the front section and then i decided to go ahead and uh film this and uh, that's all i'm going to film just the clearances and i'm going to go ahead and finish this unit this is a hd2 kit i might do i might do a, a film filming on this but or i might do it on another on another one you know on the next one up but uh but yeah let's let, let's get you set up over here and let's look at the front section and see what it looks like and uh the play that it has and how we can correct it and actually well, i'm going to take everything out of the out of the case we we'll do the rear uh we'll redo the rear it's already set up but i'll show you how to start and how to start uh how to set it up all right let me move the camera over there all right so you set up your dial indicator like that right uh so i got my let me lower the, the light down i got my dial indicator uh, i got that uh piece of metal there bolted up uh magnetic base dial indicator on the uh, input shaft uh, now the shaft is going to have a lot of movement on it because you have a snap ring underneath and then you have to bring the snap ring up towards the, uh, to, towards the drum, uh, or actually to lift the drum, the planet and the drum assembly together. Once you have them together, remember the, the drum is still sitting on the, I mean, the planet is still sitting or the overdrive section is sitting still on the, uh, forward drum assembly. So you're going to have the snap ring boop, going to the that little one step going to the planet and then holding the whole uh, the whole assembly uh, overdrive assembly up and then you know holding it up together and then you pull up on it and that's your real clearance all right I'm gonna get you a little bit closer get the camera closer I don't like I don't like zooming in so uh, I'm just gonna get the camera closer and uh, we're gonna go from there all right, so it's a, it's a little bit kind of difficult to zero out the uh, dial indicator sometimes because you have the arms right here and you try to turn the knob and it goes from zero. So right now it's it's reading like uh, not even a hundred thousandths of an inch. I mean, not even one thousand of an inch. But let's go ahead and uh, lift up and see where our clearance is at. All right, so I'm going to pull up on this. So this is my snap ring holding the overdrive section so we are at 22 thousandths of an inch 
And now this is going to be our our our, our real uh, front section. So from twenty two thousand, whatever we end up, we're gonna we're gonna uh, deduct twenty two thousand from our rating. Let's go all the way up. So we got what do we got? Forty, fifty, sixty. I can't. I can't read it from. Uh, I'm trying to read the screen, and I got the the audio uh, the audio thing in the front. Let me see if I can hold it. I'm just looking. Sixty what? Sixty four? Yeah, we got sixty four thousands. So we're gonna re reduce the sixty four thousands minus the. Uh, see how my uh, my input shaft did not go all the way down. It stayed on the planet itself. So we're gonna deduct the sixty four thousands to that. As a matter of fact. We can probably zero this. Let's go the other way. And try to zero it. Right there. Let's see where we end up at. What do we got? 45 thousands. Let it down. We are at like 1,000. So we got 45,000 front clearance. Yeah, 45,000. All right, let's look at the book and see, uh, see what we got. All right, so let's look at the manual and see what we got. So in page, in page 55, we got, uh, we got one way we used to get this uh, from Atra, little uh, bulletins, technical service bulletins. Uh, but yeah, page 55, it shows you a uh, one way to check to check the uh, the rear clearance uh, with a real long rod, you know, on the uh, on the sun gear tube, and you would lift up on the uh, not on the sun gear tube, but on the on the intermediate shaft. And you pry up on it and you check the uh, the rear section. All right, let's put this back in here. Uh, and it's 5 to 25, you know, the, the rear clearance. And let's look at the other one. And the way I always do it is on the output shaft itself and on the input shaft. So as we see here on page, what, 70? Page, page 70, uh, we have it. Here, like the other, like how we have it set up right there, and it's four to twenty-two, four to twenty-two, and we have we have forty-five thousandths of an inch, uh, so we are way out of specs, right? And then the rear assembly, uh, you know, we put the dial indicator in the back, and then we uh, we check the uh, output shaft, and we got five to twenty-five, so uh, five to twenty-two on the front, and five to twenty-five on the uh, on the rear 4 to 22 on the front and 5 to 25 on the rear all right so let's go ahead and uh get everything out from the barrel of the case because we're going to start with the rear section and then we're going to go in, uh, once we do the rear section we are going to uh install our uh uh planetary gear set assembly or actually stack it up all the way out once we get the, the rear and the mid section, then we stack it normally like you would building it and and then we do the front, the front section. So uh, we're going to do it without the, uh, do I have the overdrive? Yeah, I think I have the overdrive piston assembly installed in it. Uh, and normally you, you, basically you don't need it. I just think I, I have it in there. It's not over here. Yeah, it's in there. Uh, the overdrive. No, 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 right here. So you basically you don't need to uh, install none of this stuff when you're doing your uh, clearance, your your setup. Uh, once you get all your setups done, uh, and then you just uh, you, you you go ahead and uh, and do that. Assemble it. All right. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. All right. So let's go ahead and uh, remove everything out of uh, out of the barrel of the case. Uh, let's go ahead and uh, take our remove our dial indicator out of the way and uh, put it somewhere that it's not going to be hit by anything. 
remove our screwdriver that I used to align the pump. Let's go ahead and remove the two. pump bolts that I have on it and as you can see let's go ahead and uh, I could lift everything up I got the gasket on it uh, because you need the uh, thickness of the gasket where where's that big screwdriver at you need the thickness of the gasket uh, to compress it for the correct clearance Go ahead and lift up on the pump itself. Let's go ahead and uh, just pick it up with this. With these pliers here. Nope. No one. Come on now. It's because I got a new bushing in it and it's trying to come with the whole assembly. Even though I tried to mold that bushing. He wants to come with everything. All right. As a matter of fact, I'm just going to go ahead and lift everything up. Bring it with the overdrive section. And sometimes when you install new bushings, they get a little tight. But that's the way they get. All right. Pry up a little bit on this thing. There we go. Everything on the bench. As you can see, I got uh, my forward drum in here. And these are the washers that we are going to start measuring. So we got 45 thousandths of an inch. We're just gonna measure the original ones and see what which one we need. We need the forward or we need the direct one. I have my direct drum here uh, with no frictions. There is no intermediate frictions and there's no band for this. And once I remove my uh, overdrive section, you're gonna see that I have no planets in there either because we're checking the clearance. We're checking the clearance for the, uh, the end play on this. It is a little hot. I don't have the fan on because this microphone don't like the fan on. All right, let's go ahead and lift everything up. Get this thing, get everything out of here. Like I mentioned, the rear is already set, but we're gonna start from scratch. This is what we got down here. See that? So we got the bearings. And we got the output shaft down there. The band is in there. It's installed. That's no big deal. It's not in the way. All right. And on the rear, let me get a part number for it. I, I think I still have the paper for that thing. Oh. Uh, I know that you're looking at something down there. It's a it's a bearing. And it's this right here. Heavy duty case bushing kit. Right here. This one. It comes with uh two fifteen thousandths of an inch shims. I don't know. Yeah, two fifteen thousandths of an inch uh no one one ten. No, two tenths and two fifteen thousandths of an inch shims in it to uh to do your end and uh your end play on the rear all right let me get it out so the bearing goes like this not like that it goes like this the bushing is already installed and i got two shims here i got two shims to do the clearance we're going to start with no shims if I can separate these, they have assembly loop now. They're kind of stuck together now. Come on now. They like to do this while on camera. Maybe if I can blow some compressed air, it'll separate them. There 
Anyways, I got two shims here. All right. Uh, we might just be one. The other one down there still? No. They're both here. Yeah. All right, I'm going to put you guys on pause, and we're going to start with just the bearing. All right. Well, let's go ahead and do that now. I'm still trying to separate this two. I'm, I'm pretty sure I got two of them here. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> I separated two of them, both of them already. All right. So let's go ahead and uh, drop our bearing here. So we have our no walk heavy duty bushing here. That's part of the kit, right? I already have installed my uh, uh, output uh, shaft uh, uh, seal on it. And I do recommend when you're starting to do this, do not install your seal. I mean, cause you're gonna have to go in and out, in and out a bunch of times until you get this thing set up. All right. So now we have no shims. We're gonna just drop in our output shaft. Carefully drop it in there. And let me just take this apart real quick. So we have this piece right here. Let me take it apart so uh, y'all can see so y'all can see what I'm I'm talking about here. All right, so we got our output shaft there. Now let's go ahead and install this with your normal bearings, the way they go. For a lady, this one has a uh, a factory shim already already installed. Actually, I shimmed this one. Let me put you guys on pause. Let me look for the original one. Because I, I already have shimmed this right here for the front section. Hold that thought. All right. So I was looking for this factory spacer. And I had installed one of these shims in it. And you don't want to do that. Uh, these are for the uh, 400 or the early style 4L80. And I was doing the... Uh, the clearance on this, and I guess he might have gotten stayed stuck on this be behind this. So uh, let's go ahead and uh, drop this down. Drop that in there, and here we have our sun gear, the flat side goes up. Whoops. I'm sweating buckets in here. All right, the flat side goes down, uh, goes uh, up, and you have your lube, lube hole, and then you have on the sun gear, you also have a lube hole here in the center. You line those two up. Line them up. You line them up. And then you install your bearing. Like that. Drop it in there. It has new bushing, so it's going to go a little bit uh, firm. And now we drop our center support. And here is uh, it's a three-piece bearing, so here's the other brace. And there is that one washer that uh, once we do the, 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 the rear, we're going to do the, the center. So you see we got new bushings already installed. And we install this like it goes with the center support bolt going towards the front and you have the alignment little guide right here that's going to guide you to where this thing is going to go just like so and let's go ahead and drop our snap ring the opening at the nine o'clock position looking at where I'm standing but where you're standing is going to be the three o'clock position because you're looking at it from the top of the of the motor and I'm looking at at it from from the pan side all right let me set up the uh, dial indicator in the back and uh, and measure the uh, the clearance and see uh, how many shims we need all right so we are zeroed we are zeroed and we are going to lift on our output shaft 
our intermediate tube likes to slide down because we're upside down. So let's go ahead and, because uh, we could do it sideways too, but I like to have, let me go ahead and turn this a little bit this way, zero it. There we go, it's zeroed. Let's see how much we got on the back. We got 24, we got 24 thousands with just the bearing by itself and nothing in it. 24, almost 25 thousands. So we are, we need to be uh, five to what? Five to 25. And we are at 24, we are within range, but we are at, uh, at the max. So we need to install 5 to 25 to bring it down to a 5 we need a 15 thousandths of an inch uh, shim in it and let's go ahead and do that and see what we end up with all right so I was getting everything out so let's go ahead and uh, remove our output shaft remember we have no we have no shims in it we need to remove our bearing Let's put this thing to the side over here. And let's uh, choose a uh, 15 thousandths of an inch. What do I do with my caliper? So we, I, we still have our dial indicator down there. So let's see what this got. This is 10 thousandths, 10 thousandths of an inch. Lower the light on this thing. So we got 10 thousandths of an inch shim. Uh, we have another 10 thousandths. So we need 15 thousandths. It comes with a 215 and two tenths. All right, so we got 15 thousandths of an inch shim here. And I had to, uh, I had installed this and I had still had too much clearance on this thing. So I installed two, the two tenths. That's why you had two tens in it. All right, so now let's go ahead and drop our bearing like this, not like that. The fold needs to go down because the, the fold is what aligns it on that no walk bushing down there. All right, let's go ahead and drop our output shaft. All right. And let's go ahead and uh, I'm gonna drop this in here so I don't drop that bearing. I mean, I usually paste it back here, but let's go ahead and drop this assembly down. Our center support, don't forget that race, because if you forget that race, you're gonna have a wrong reading. We might need to take this out one more time. We're gonna see what we're gonna end up with. All right. All right, let's make sure it's fully seated. Oh, and uh, I forgot to mention that the other snap ring is down there. The one that goes underneath the uh, center support, uh, it's already installed. So uh, let's go ahead and uh, flip this thing over and see what it looks like. All right, let's see what this looks like. So we got everything zeroed out and I think I am uh, a little bit on the negative side on the line. I'm on the left, left side of the zero line. That's no big deal, it's just, just a hair. All right, let's go ahead and lift up on our output shaft and see what it looks like. And we got the, we got the four. We are right on the money. We are actually five. Yeah, five thousandths of an inch, which is what, four to 22? I, I keep forgetting, because they're very close together. One is five to 25, and the other one is four to 22. Let's look at the book. On the uh, output shaft is 5 to 25, and we're actually at 5. Yep, 5 to 25. So we're right on the money. We're right on the money with that. 15 thousandths of an inch shim. That's what he took with that bearing. All right, let's go ahead and uh, do the middle section. Just don't pay attention to the other unit that I'm going to take you to the vise, and I have another unit on the other bench. Just don't pay attention to that. All right, well, let me get this thing out of the out of the case right quick and bring it to the bench. All right, so we have 
this section here. Let's get the output shaft. And let's assemble this like we normally would. Let me go down a little bit. There we go. All right. So this is how you want it, you know, to check your uh, rear assembly. Uh, and play. Let's go ahead and this is gonna start taking this apart and assemble it like it normally would go. All right, so you have your uh, intermediate shaft assembly. Let's go ahead and drop it into here. Clock it in there. Put it upside down in the hole. New bushings. I'll put shaft on it. Go ahead, and, go ahead and assemble this thing. There we go. So what we're going to do next is not going to affect our our rear section. Now here is where the magic happens with this thing. So normally, where's the plastic one? I mean, you could use the you could you could reuse the original plastic one. And let's check the let's check the thickness on this on this two, right quick. So the original one is 50, 59 thousandths of an inch. 59 thousandths. Let's look at this one. It's the same, 59 thousandths of an inch. So the thickness is the same. So it's not gonna change anything. But since this is a two tab, as you can see there, and this is a four tab, you just straighten up two of them and just drop it in there. Drop it in there like that. Drop your assembly. We have a new uh, roller clutch, new bushing. And actually the planet goes in first before this, but we had it installed because we were doing the, uh, the rear section. The rear section and play, total and play, all right. And now we get our assembly together. I already have the new rings installed. I'm just gonna lift it up out of here, stand it on the bench, and let me go up a little bit on the camera. Go ahead, lower you guys a little bit. This is where it gets a little tricky because there's kind of no way to uh, put a dial indicator on this thing. Piece of shop towel. And then you just grab like this, and you lift up. You get a little screwdriver. Actually, this is perfect. This is perfect. We have no clearance up and down. I'm actually lifting up the, the center support. Usually, you will have a lot of slop in between the rear planet and the forward planet. But as you can see here, we're good. We're good with it. All right, so uh, let's go ahead and just drop it in. I was gonna show you this because when I was doing the, uh, the, the initial one, I just don't know why it had a lot of clearance in between both. Oh yeah, here we go. We got, I wanna say maybe five thousandths of an inch. I don't know if the camera can pick that up, but I'm actually lifting it up. That's pretty good. That's actually real good. All right, let me go ahead and assemble the whole thing up and uh, up to the point to the front clearance. But whenever you start dealing with the uh, with that type of clearance, you install the, these in between underneath that four tap washer and you take care of that clearance. All right, 
So we did not end it up doing anything for this. But the front clearance, yeah, we need to take care of that. We have excessive clearance in the front. All right, I'm going to have to, uh, I didn't write it down. I'm going to have to uh, go back in the video and see how, what, what shim we need, uh, what thickness do we need to correct that. Okay, so we had 45 thousandths of an inch clearance in the front. After lifting up the input shaft to hold the, uh, the front section, like you see here, the snap ring holds the front section and brings the, uh, the drum up. So we had 45 thousandths of an inch clearance after uh, the 20 something clearance that we had, what, 22 clearance, 22 thousandths, the travel that was from the shaft from the snap ring to the uh, overdrive planet. So we had 45 thousandths of an inch. So we got our factory forward plastic washer is 60 thousandths. So uh, zeroing this, one of the Sonics one is uh, 93 thousandths of an inch. Is that what it said in the package? 93 thousandths? 94 thousandths, okay. So we got 94 thousandths. 94,000 minus, minus the 60,000, we got 34,000 of an inch. So by installing this, we take care of 34,000 of an inch. But we got 16,000 of an inch more. So, uh, well, we got, we will still, we'll still want to be within the, uh, within the four, uh, four to 25. So uh, we need to bring this to, uh, I mean, five is the minimum, um, four is the minimum. So let, let, let's install just this one right here and let's not install any shims. So we're gonna install the 94 thousands. This is go, this is just goes like this. This is gonna bring the forward drum up 34 thousands of an inch. And uh, it's gonna bring my whole section up 34 thousands of an inch. And that's gonna get us pretty close. If that does not get us close enough, then we measure the factory one that goes on the forward clutch hub to, uh, to the forward drum. Let me get it out so you can show it to you. So we already, we're, we're, with this one, we're taking care of 34 thousandths of an inch. It's this one right here. Let's go ahead and take it out and, and let's measure this thing. See, see, see how thick this thing is. This is also 60 thousandths of an inch. Let's go ahead and install it back in. Let's get one of the Sonics one out. Let's see what it looks like. And these are 78 thousandths of an inch. So we got 78 thousandths, let's clear this thing, 78 thousandths of an inch, minus 60. We got 18 more thousandths of an inch if we install one of these, as you can see. And this is going to bring our whole forward clutch drum all the way up. And this is what you really want to do, you don't want to mess with the, uh, with the pump washer that's already on there, as a matter of fact. I. Let me get the frictions out. I don't build it like this. I drop this in here and then install our frictions. All right. Yeah, I know. There's suede flying all over the place. So we got 18 thousandths difference in the rear. Ah, come on. All right, let me, let me go ahead and finish this thing up and uh, we'll stack it and check the front. All right, same operation here. I already got, I already picked up the input shaft a few times to zero this thing out. We are zeroed out. The output shaft is not all the way down. Uh, let's go ahead and lift this, this thing and see how much clearance do we got. We got, we still got a lot, 30, 36, 7, 
38 thousandths of an inch. We should have already uh, taken care of most of our clearance with that. All right, well, let's install the other washer then. Uh, the uh, forward drum to forward clutch hub uh, spacer washer. So right, we are zeroed out. As you, let me push the, uh, there we go. So here, our input shaft is all the way down. Right there, it's zeroed out. So we still got a lot of clearance here. We need to drop it 20, 20 thousandths of an inch more to be within the range. All right, one more time. So I already got this thing zeroed out again, and let's see what we got. Let's go ahead and lift up on it. And we got 19 thousandths, 19 thousandths, 20 thousandths. Now this is all the way down. Let me go ahead and lift up. Uh, so there we got zero. The shaft is on the planet. We got 20 thousandths. We're still close to the max. We're close to the max. Let's go ahead and measure the, uh, the shims that come in the uh, Transgo kit. Uh, the ceiling ring, the Transgo ceiling ring kit. And uh, we're probably going to need to use at least one of those. All right, so we replace both of these with, uh, with some thick ones. And uh, the Transgo kit comes with two little shims. And they are... 15 thousandths of an inch so this is going to bring us to uh close to five to have the uh, perfect clearance on this thing so we're going to have perfect rear clearance and perfect front clearance well actually we don't need to take this off because it, it goes on the from the forward clutch to the uh clutch hub to direct clutch hub i mean to direct drum so we don't need to remove that. Now we are going to drop one of these 15 thousandths of an inch shim here and install the Sonics washer back in there. And assemble it and go back and check it. So yeah, you want to build a performance unit and you don't want it to fail. Make sure you have that your input and your outputs are good. And then the, uh, the ones on the, on the planet are perfect as well. And you're not going to have any issues. Now, the reason that we were having less uh, clearance in the front to begin with is because of the uh, shim that got stuck in there. And uh, if you shim the sun gear, it's going to bring the sun gear up. And the sun gear holds the direct drum. And it'll bring the direct drum up. And uh, it helps with your front clearance. So there's a couple of ways you can do to uh, to set up your clearance on these things, but I believe that this is the best way to do it. Um, set your rear clearance nice and good, your middle section, and then your front section, and you're gonna have a real happy, happy unit. All right, well let me <laughs> assemble this thing back together. And I think I am going to go ahead and assemble everything together. You know, I'm going to install the pump O-ring. I, I was not installing the pump O-ring because, I mean, we were going in and out with the pump, in and out with the pump. So I'll remove the pump O-ring. I mean, I'll install the pump O-ring. And just, uh, this will be the last. This will be the last. This is going to bring us, this is going to bring us close to five thousandths of an inch, a little bit over. But we'll see. All right. So we are very very close and that is actually <clears throat> so I'm, I'm i got the snap ring all the way up and we have 18 thousandths of an inch and i'm gonna go ahead and try and lift this up somehow and we got let me hold it up let me look 24 so we got six thousandths of an inch we got six thousandths of an inch so there we have it we have six thousandths of an inch uh, clearance i know it went all the way down uh, but that's the shaft 
and the shaft going into the snap ring, um, uh, the snap ring going into the overdrive planet to lift everything up. So we are good. We are good. Now let's talk about this thing for a little bit. All right. So what have we learned today? Well, for ones that it takes a little bit and a lot of measurements, a lot of disassembly and assembly to get the things the way they're supposed to be, to get the things right. Uh, so we saw that our rear section, uh, the front section gave us a lot of, a little bit of, of uh, the way we started before because of that one shim that was on top, on, on the bottom of the sun gear, on the bottom of the sun, sun gear bearing on the rear section. And that bringing the, uh, the, the sun gear up, it brings the intermediate shaft tube up and the, the reg drum sits on top of that tube. So it was bringing everything up uh, together. So once we eliminated that one shim, our whole assembly uh, got further down and we had a lot of end play, 45 thousandths of an inch end plate on the front. So, uh, I mean, that was a lot of clearance besides the, the shaft movement that you have with the, uh, with the snap ring, right? So we added, we added the, the, the Sonics uh, washer that goes uh, in between the forward clutch hub to direct drum, the uh, Sonics uh, uh, washer that goes on the forward clutch hub to forward drum and we added the 15,000 shim from Transgo that goes on the forward clutch hub uh, to direct drum. So be basically picking everything up. I have everything assembled. I knew that I was not gonna have any more issues anymore. So I to already torqued my pump. Oh, and that's another thing. You gotta use your pump gasket and you have to torque it because you want to compress, you have to put the thickness of the compressed gasket in consideration, take that in consideration with your, with your front end clearance. Uh, uh, because, I mean, it's gonna be there, right? So even, even though we had the overdrive section, uh, the overdrive piston housing off and some other components off, it makes it easier to work with than to be disassembling the whole thing, assembling the whole thing with the frictions and the band and, and all that good stuff. So when you, when you do it, like, like when we did the rear section, the way I had it uh, disassembled, like partially disassembled, all you need is the components that take place uh, to do the clearance check, right? And in the front, the same thing. Now the forward drum, I mean, the clutches are there. I mean, clutches are clutches uh, for that drum. But the direct drum, I had it without the, without the frictions because it's so much easier to take the forward drum out and take it out and instead of wiggling all the way down I mean you can have the direct clutch frictions off to uh, start measuring your uh, front section so there you have it I mean it's just uh, we could have done I have the extensions for my uh, for my dial indicator you know a little set of extensions we could have done everything with the with the unit standing like this do the rear section and the front section it's just that I'm used to doing it the other way around you know where you flip it over the intermediate shaft tube uh, slides out like halfway you know when you flip the case over and stuff like that but i mean if you have i do have them but i mean if you have all the extensions for your dial indicator if it's easier for you you're measuring you put your screwdriver down here you know and you pry the whole planetary gear assembly up towards the uh, center support and you measure the intermediate shaft play which is the one that's going to go up and down and you can check it through the front uh, and that, that you will be checking the rear uh, end play on that. And I mean, it is what it is. It, it is uh, that, that's what it takes. I mean, it just takes a lot of work. And I know that a lot of people or a lot of builders, they don't want to show all these things because I mean, you, you, have, to, you have to do all of this. I mean, it's a lot of work. It's a lot of work. It is more work trying to do it while filming and trying to explain, getting the parts together, 
you know, disassembling, measuring, calculating, and all that stuff. I mean, when you're alone and nobody's bothering you and you don't, you're not filming anything, I mean, it just goes so much smoother. Now, uh, I did uh, film the, it's on another SD card. I did film the, uh, the shift kit installation for the pump part of it. And I am going to film, I'm going to get the other SD card and film the rest of the uh, HD2 shift kit. Uh, well, I shouldn't say that. I mean, because I still got to get that unit out of the way. And uh, I might not have enough time. But if you see the video of the HD2 shift kit installed on this unit, that means that I made some time for it. If not, I'm sorry, guys. But, I mean, it is what it is, and I'm a little bit tied up. But if I can make some time today or maybe tonight, because uh, tomorrow I got to do another unit besides that one. Well, I got to put that together because that's, that's core now. And I got to put it back together, and that's, that's going. That's leaving. Uh, but anyways... Uh, my name is Hiram, and you guys know what to do. Uh, I mean, thumbs up, subscribe, like it, whatever, share it, do whatever you want to do. And uh, <clears throat> this method applies to 400s. It's the same concept, you know, the rear planet assembly. It's the same concept in between the front and rear planet. You know, you got to check that too. I mean, don't skip that. And you will be in good shape. And now, we're out to the races. Let's spray some of that, you know, go juice.